Welcome, everybody. Um, it's great to see so many people, and and I, what I what I the point I want to make is that this is the beginning of a process, and we're hoping that uh, many hundreds or thousands of people will, will be involved in the in the process of the redevelopment of St Leonard's Hospital. Um, so we're very important. This is very much about involvement and participation, and it's about um, looking at a building, St Leonard's Hospital, which. Uh, was once saved by the public uh, when, when it was due for closure back in the 80s, and uh, it's now crumbling. Uh, it looked after by the great uh, company, uh, NHS Property, that seemed to allow everything to crumble. Um, I'm sure that's very unkind. Uh, but now we, now we want to look at its future. We want to look at the way in which the hospital can develop, and we want, we want to have your ideas for, for that development. Um, in the slides, you'll, you'll see some very interesting pictures from, from, from the past, and, and some of those pictures are designed to show, show a kind of a contrast, because at the moment we're working very closely with um, the leaders of local health and social care services and local government, and we think that's a, a, a very important way for us to operate and, and, and develop this project. Um, so um, we're working with the Hobbiton Hospital, with the East London Foundation Trust, London Borough of Hackney, the uh, City Corporation, and the City. And the most important thing for this exercise is to hear your voice, not ours, to hear what you have to say, to hear your ideas, and to hear how you'd like to see this hospital develop. And then we have to sort of build a movement so that we can start to put pressure on the whole system, and locally and nationally, to get money for uh, a, a So um, I, think, I think I now go back to, to Malcolm to take over the next bit of the, of, of the project. Uh, well, firstly, could, could, could I ask uh, Claire to, uh, to introduce herself, oh, yes. our third speaker? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Claire Hogg. I'm the Director of Strategic Implementation and Partnerships at the Homerton um, University Hospitals. And I um, sit on the St. Leonard's Project Group, um, for which is a, includes members of the City and Hackney Health System, uh, along with Malcolm and Malcolm and representatives from ELFT, um, the CCG, uh, and the council. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much, Claire. Um, can I just um, add a, a very warm welcome uh, from me to everyone who's joined uh, the meeting? It's, it's fantastic to see so many people uh, here. And uh, as Malcolm says, we hope this will be the start of an interactive uh, process in which local people uh, have a genuine say in determining the future of St Leonard's Hospital. Just a few uh, housekeeping points, if I may, before we crack on with the presentations. Um, uh, as Malcolm Alexander has already mentioned, if you could kindly keep uh, uh, your uh, devices on uh, mute uh, unless um, your turn comes to speak. And uh, John Williams, uh, who is executive director at uh, Health Watch Hackney, will be managing the process of inviting people uh, to speak. So uh, he's the key person who controls uh, that aspect. And um, if you uh, are speaking to the meeting, uh, do please uh, give us your name uh, if, you, if you're willing to do so. Um, and uh, perhaps say whether you're a member of the public, or a member of staff, at St Leonard's uh, or a, a council member or some other capacity. And uh, there will be a, a process for people to send in their views uh, after the end of the meeting um, if uh, they wish to do so and don't have the opportunity uh, to speak at the meeting. So um, if, um, uh, unless there are any further introductory points, which I've overlooked, uh, perhaps we could go to the first set of slides. Okay, well, Malcolm, will that be uh, your set of slides or the agenda? Just so um, well, let's, let's go through the agenda quickly, just so people uh, have um, an overview of what we're going to do. Okay. Uh, so I'll uh, keep this short because um, uh, uh, we're already <laughs> a little behind uh, schedule. Uh, I'll begin by uh, giving uh, a short presentation on the background uh, to um, uh, the development. Uh, Malcolm Alexander will then 
uh, outlay, um, outline the process uh, for collecting your views and uh, integrating them into a people's plan for the future of St. Leonard's. And then Claire Hogg uh, is going to speak on uh, the vision for the future uh, of St. Leonard's. And then comes uh, the important part of the meeting, your chance to have your say uh, on what should happen uh, to St. Leonard's. And uh, at, um, just before the close of the meeting, uh, Malcolm Alexander will tell us about the next steps and we will close the meeting at uh, eight o'clock. So John, if we could go now to uh, my slides and um, let me say something about the background. Okay, Malcolm. Yep, let me go one down, please. St. Leonard's uh, has a long and uh, distinguished history of service to the local community. And uh, Health Watch City of London are extremely pleased to be working with our colleagues at Health Watch Hackney uh, to try to make sure that local residents have a proper opportunity to have their say in shaping its future. Uh, most of the hospital buildings date from the 1860s and 1870s and uh, are in a poor state. Uh, there is general agreement that the hospital urgently needs to be redeveloped to make it fit for the future. And you can see from the slide uh, that um, City and Hackney uh, Clinical Commissioning uh, Group has described it as an extremely old and dilapidated building which has been poorly utilised for a number of years with wasted spaces and services which are currently inconvenient for service users to access. So the, the poor state of the existing buildings is a challenge, but the ambition to redevelop it as a new facility serving the local community also provides a, a great opportunity to create something better. So next slide, please. Sorry, it's frozen for somebody to notice, isn't it? Uh, now this uh, just lists uh, some of the many milestones in the history of St. Leonard's. Uh, it began life in 1777 as the infirmary, the infirmary, sorry, for Shoreditch Workhouse, uh, on a site with the evocative name as the Land of Promise. It was first recommended for renovation as long ago as 1934, and it's now nearly 40 years uh, since it um, stopped treating uh, inpatients in 1984. There have been several attempts at redeveloping a hospital. Uh, a full business case for redevelopment was approved early in 2010, uh, only to be abandoned a few months later. Another attempt got as far as an outline business case, OBC, uh, in 2012, but again, that uh, development never materialized. So St. Leonard's carries on today in its old buildings, but still playing a very valuable role uh, in providing outpatients to the residents uh, of um, uh, City and Hackney. So, um, uh, Nick, if we could go to the next slide, please, John. I'm having a bit of irritation here. It's cold. Ah. However, the irritation here, it's cold enough. Yeah, it's, it's frozen on me. Okay, let me just escape that. Okay, let's try again. Better. Okay. Great, thank you. Oh, back one, please. Back one. 
that's it. Um, this summarizes uh, the range of services currently provided uh, from St. Leonard's and uh, the bodies uh, which deliver them. Uh, as you can see, most of the services are provided by the trust, which runs uh, Homerton Hospital. And just picking out a, a few of the services mentioned on the slide, um, they include uh, foot health, uh, locomotor, physiotherapy, pain management and chronic fatigue, uh, wheelchair services, uh, ACRES, a service providing treatment for patients with respiratory conditions, uh, talk changes, talking therapies, anxiety and depression. And then as uh, Malcolm Alexander has mentioned, uh, ELFT uh, provides is a, is a different provider uh, which uh, caters for adults with learning disabilities. Uh, so uh, next slide, please. Uh, the, the street where St. Leonard stands isn't uh, owned by the Homerton Hospital, which delivers most of the services, but by an NHS property company, NHSPS. Um, Homerton has expressed an interest in taking a transfer of the site, uh, but that process uh, has a long way to go before any final decision can be taken. In uh, 2018, uh, the corporate bodies, if you like, which are the main stakeholders in St. Leonard's, uh, started uh, working uh, towards preparing a business case for the redevelopment of the hospital. And uh, the bodies are listed on the, on the slide. Uh, the CCG uh, used to be City and Hackney, uh, now Northeast London CCG. Uh, NHSPS, the site owners, Homerton, provider of most of the clinical services, and the two boroughs, City of London Corporation and the London Borough of Hackney. So uh, can we go on to the next slide? The, um, as, as I understand it, uh, NHS and uh, Treasury requirements on capital investment um, mean that there's a complex uh, exercise that has to be gone through uh, to get the redevelopment approved. And uh, the first part of that is summarized on this slide, and it's the preparation of a strategic outline case, or SOT, SOC. And uh, for St. Leonard's, uh, this has been broken down into three phases. Uh, phase one is a demand and capacity analysis. Now, uh, in other words, what that, what that is looking at is uh, the demand for the services currently provided uh, from, from St. Leonard's and the capacity uh, of the existing buildings to meet that demand. But that's not a snapshot of the demand as it exists today. Uh, the uh, process uh, projects the demand, how it's going to change over the next five to 10 years, taking account of population growth and so forth. Now, that part of the exercise uh, has been completed by a firm of external consultants called Attain, and their conclusion was that there was a compelling case uh, for change. Uh, uh, Attain's uh, report was completed in draft in January 2020, but then progress was stalled, I think because of COVID. Um, meetings of the project group, um, which is supposed to be coordinating the project, uh, was suspended. And Attain's draft report was left in limbo, uh, waiting for sign-off. And it wasn't really until February of this year uh, that things began to unfreeze. Uh, Attain's report on phase 1A was signed off and meetings of the project group on which our two health watchers are represented uh, got going again. 
So the first task which the project group is supposed to be uh, undertaking is to oversee the completion of the remainder of phase one, which is called phase one B. Um, and really that's, that's hardly got started yet, but the idea will be to look at how the work that was done at phase one A is affected by uh, changes in the way that healthcare is delivered, changes resulting from COVID, and the possibility of new services which might be provided at uh, St. Leonard's. So uh, changes in the delivery of healthcare, uh, I think that the effect of those is, is difficult to predict, and I'm sure Claire will be telling us more about that uh, in, in her presentation. But it seems to me that they could cut both ways. Uh, they could uh, identify a need for the delivery of additional services at St. Leonard's. Equally, they could result in some of the services currently provided within the hospital uh, being relocated so that they're provided in other healthcare settings, settings out in the community, or maybe deliver virtually uh, or at patients' homes. Um, so uh, if we can move on to uh, the last slide, um, the process of building up a business case for the redevelopment of uh, a hospital still has a, a long, long way to go. And it, it is possible that it could be derailed um, as happened in 2010 and again in 2020. <laughs> um, but the opportunity there is uh, to create something much better than what we have at the moment. And uh, as Gail Beer put it in her closing slide, um, we could be looking at a new dynamic and ever-changing hospital that responds to the needs of the local community, adaptable, flexible, and dependable, a future land of promise. So that's the end of uh, what I had to say, and I'll hand over now to Malcolm Alexander. Not a land of hope and glory. <laughs> oh, what a shame. I'm just going to share this Malcolm's Alexander's presentation once I found it. There it is. Okay. I, I think one of the things which is really important to think about is that. Um, it, 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 in order to convince the NHS and local government to really bring about significant change, that, that means a very high level of involvement by local people. Because the, 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 the level of, of transformation of services, for example, could the St. Leonard's Hospital, as it is now, be replaced with a new community hospital? And, and where would the where would the, re, the resources come through for that and 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 what would be within that and, and, and the whole purpose of the process today is to say to you you know what do you think should be within this if, if, if we could sort of design this new hospital what do you think should be there what sort of services would be really valuable what 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 are we missing in the community at the moment and what can we create which is really important for the future so let's go to the next slide please John so um, what I'm doing is, is I'm just talking about the how we're going to develop this plan, but also thinking, I don't know if anybody was there on, on that day, on the 26th of September, 1983. Anybody there? Um, oh, you were there, Malcolm. Yeah. OK, so this was a, a, an important moment in history where the, the decision about the future of St. Helens Hospital was, was being made. And on that particular day, people came from all over Hackney in their thousands to, to the town hall. And, um, and they wanted to impress upon the, the health authority that, that local people valued this hospital very much. But it was also a critical point in history because it was the point when, when uh, the Hamilton Hospital was being created. And, and it was at that time, it was a rather small hospital and five, hospital, five local hospitals were being closed down. So, so people locally were very, very concerned about the, the loss of hospitals without a, a real vision for the, what was going to be created by the Hamilton. So that, that's, that's quite important to think about and, and think about the influence that those people had at the time. Um, so 
you know, our commitment as, as health watches uh, is, is, is critical here. And our collaboration with all parties is, is very important because this process won't be successful and, and unless we can sort of drive a real movement in, in City and Hackney to make sure that, that the you know, ideas are developed and, and created and there is co-production and partnership, um, that, that, that's going to be fundamental for the success of, of, of this project. And so what we want to do is to produce this, uh, what they call the people's plan. And the idea of that people's plan is to, is, is to insert within that plan, you know, many ideas which, are, which, are, which people are now uh, developing. And um, it, it will be a long process. And I think with any long public involvement process, you have a problem because trying to keep people on board over a period of time is, is always difficult. And it is very difficult to avoid being disappointed because, as we've heard, there have been projects in the past where they've attempted to develop the site which have failed. And, and we're determined that on this occasion that we're going to succeed. So can we have the next slide, please, John? Um, so what happened, going, going back to those, those old years, uh, it's an administrator's part, activists take over hospitals. So this is that point in, in 1984 where local people actually took over St. Edith's Hospital to prevent it from being closed. Um, but, but the point is not, not to uh, suggest that the hospital should be occupied, but to suggest that, that we should do things a different way in a, in, a, in a more collaborative way. And, you know, what's really essential is that um, we, we have this vision and that, that vision continues to develop. And more and more people become involved in that vision and and the ideas that people come up with are developed because in, in reality just putting forward an idea and hoping it's going to stick doesn't work you, you've got to you've got to keep at it um and there's also sort of a, a problem here about how the whole thing will be funded and what we've seen for example in south london with lambeth hospital is the way in which um there was a sort of site with a hospital lots of lots of facilities and that whole site has been turned into a housing estate and, and uh, a bit of the Maudsley Hospital has been knocked down to, to make room for a, another branch of, of the mental health facilities for South London. So I think we've got to look at that very, very carefully because there will be a balance, no doubt, with uh, the desire to, to put housing on that site. And how do we make sure that, that there is a, a proper balance between health facilities, health services and, and you know, other related services? And the amount of housing that, that might be on the site or is that housing should that housing be specifically for uh, healthcare or social care workers that's something which i think we've really got to consider and next slide please john yes yeah, so so, th so this is a uh, another sort of example of of that that St. Edward's was uh, an acute hospital with an ae department um and after the uh campaign after the occupation and, and all the campaign that went on, th this was the outcome, um, that there was an agreement that as the Homerton Hospital was being created, the, services, the acute services could move over there um, and that the hospital became um, f full of, of, a, of a whole variety of, of, uh, of community services, which, uh, which has been, many of them have been maintained to this day. And, and, and the truth is that, that you know, people who use those services speak very highly of them. Uh, and so, you know, we know that, that, uh, that the quality of those services is, is very good. So um, the, today's meeting is the first stage. Um, the next stage is that we want to start uh, gathering more and more information from people in, in, in the local area. So we want to gather information from, from local people. We want to communicate with as many people as possible. And we want to find out what it is that people would like to see develop here. So let's have the next slide, please. And you oh, you actually sort of see a, a, a picture here of, of the actual time when there was, a, you can see a, a poster there that says, so that is, an, is under occupation. I think at this point, the security guards moved in. But, um, Apart from the, the process of communicating with as many people as possible, and we're doing things like, for example, asking GPs to communicate with all of their patients and to tell them what's happening, uh, because GPs can, you know, if we look at GPs across the area, they can communicate with, with high percentage of people who live uh, locally. And so we'll be using that as one of the, 
one of the techniques, but we're also been looking at the new areas which have become known as neighborhoods or prim primary care networks with GPs have clustered together. And um, they form sort of geographical areas. So we want to sort of target those geographical areas and we want to go, to, we want to move into all of them to talk to people in those areas to develop focus groups and other means of communication, find out what people want. Um, so it's it's a continual process of of listening, of, of involving, getting people's ideas and developing those ideas with the people who have developed them. We want to also talk about, you know, it mentions how to reach groups. I mean, when, when you hold a public meeting, um, you're going to tend to get people coming along who are aware of, of, of that process, unless you advertise very, very widely. Um, so getting our volunteers from Health Watch to start moving into the community to speak to groups that may be uh, not not very well connected at the moment to find out the sort of issues that they think are really important in, in this development. So you know, trying to get out to as many different groups as possible, trying to look at all the different ways of, of communicating is, is absolutely fundamental. And another slide, John. Well, the, 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 actually, this is an example of, of, a, of a very large, I think that, that was um, uh, like a, a an advertisement that was, I think, 15 foot high that was placed around uh, Hackney at the time uh, in order to encourage people to participate on this. It said September the 26th, and that was the date when the, when the health authority was meeting. And so all over the borough, there was these huge posters in, to encourage people to, uh, to participate. And, uh, and, and they were very successful. I'm not suggesting we should do them again, but it might be a very good idea if we could advertise in a significant way so that people know what's going on. So um, the next steps, um, you know, working together, collating the views that people put forward, and then developing a, a draft uh, people's plan. For um, so the, the idea is to bring forward all your ideas and the ideas from people across, across uh, the city and Hackney um, to produce a plan. And then we have further meetings where we we're present the plan. And then, we, then when we get to the, the right point, we have a sort of process of consultation to see what people more widely think about these ideas. But the most important thing is that we get to this point where we have done sufficient public involvement work, involved enough people, heard lots and lots of ideas, perhaps encouraged people to build up um, groups where they're looking at, at particular developments and starting to put all those ideas together into this plan and developing the plan so that uh, those we're working with across the borough um, the, the, the leaders of, of local services are working with us uh, in, in a collegial way so that we have real success in developing these services. And uh, John, can I have another slide? Uh, yeah, so that was actually uh, a sign that was put up opposite uh, St. Ellis Hospital at the time of the, the, the occupation. Um, next slide, please, John. And these, these are a couple of ideas which have already been contributed uh, and Coral Jones and by uh, Carol Ackroyd on behalf of Keep Home NHS Public. So these are just two examples where people have, have contributed some ideas about sort of developments that, that, uh, that we want. So the process has started and uh, now I think that's the last slide and it's over to you to tell us what you think important oh, and, and what you think should be developed. It's over to Claire actually. <laughs> Sorry, over to Claire. I do apologise, Claire. Yes. Thank you so much. Thanks, um, Malcolm and Malcolm. Um, so I don't have any um, slides to present, um, I, but I just wanted to kind of give a very um, brief outline of um, what we're trying to do through the St. Leonard's Project Group, and in particular working with um, Healthwatch on a public engagement plan. So I think as both Malcolm and Malcolm have said, um, this, is a, uh, this is a really unique opportunity to work with pub public, staff, other stakeholders to um, co-create a vision for what we want the St Leonard's site to be in the future. Um, we're, we see this as a really great opportunity to think about how can we develop that site um, so that it really meets the needs of the local population. Um, thinking about 
what are the population health needs how can we use that that site as um as really a uh, what some people have, might have heard the term anchor institute but something that is doing more than providing health and social care services but also offering opportunities around education employment supporting social isolation if that's an issue for the local population um, the potential was as um has been referred to there is the potential for, for housing and i think you know given the um the availability of capital for these sorts of developments we do need to consider whether there might be some uh we we need to consider options around public private um, funding uh, and, and whether key worker housing would be something that would be desirable on that site. Um, I think one of the things that we're really keen to do in working with Health Watch on the public engagement is really to open the opportunity up for a whole wide, uh, wide range of possibilities that we can look at for the St Leonard site. Um, we see this as being uh, more than um, a, a provider of healthcare services. Um, we at the Homerton obviously has a number of healthcare services already based there. And uh, at this moment in time, there aren't any plans to move those services off of the site. It's a really important base for our staff. Um, and I think we recognize that whilst this is, it's, we need to remember that the St. Leonard's currently is a, um, a provider of health services but also a provider of a base for our staff so we do need to make sure that any public engagement that we're doing is running alongside a program of staff engagement um so this really is the opportunity i think that that for you all to start to help to influence how we see the future of st leonard's um and we really want to kind of do a bit of blue sky thinking with you really about what all the possibilities could be we can't hope to necessarily achieve all of those but I think unless we start to think broadly about how do you use that whole site the whole campus to really address both the needs of the local population so like what's going to make the biggest difference to that neighborhood in terms of the people that live and work around there but then also what are some of the services that we need to continue to provide from there that may be um specialist community services that are continuing to provide a city and hackney service to the local community and i think as some people have already pointed out um that you know it, it is generally quite well connected from a public transport point of view hoxton stations just down the road there's good bus links so it is accessible in terms of the ability for people to get to that site um and we need to you know think about how we're going to use that site really for the absolute benefit for our local population so i think that's all i'm going to say because i i don't want to give the impression that we have already created a vision because we haven't so i, I wasn't here to say this is our vision because we don't have the vision yet that's what we want to work with you on we've got lots of ideas um through health and social care but i think it's really important that we engage with you um the public and um the staff about what we could use that site to do thanks everyone Okay. I've... Excellent. Thank you. Now, um, our dear friends. Okay, I've got three people wanting to ask questions. Do you right, want? Okay. Do you want to take them one at a time, or? Yeah, take them one at a time. Yeah. Okay. The first. Person... There's also some very interesting chat, by the way, if you haven't seen it. Yes, there's the spread chat. Um, okay, so the first person is David Walter. David, can you uh, I'll, I'll unmute yourself? Yeah. Yeah. I've, uh... Thank looking you. through this wonderful book called women or from hackney's history and the one thing that's famous about saint leonard's hospital is a woman called edith kevill right and uh, i think that the future of saint leonard's should reflect her legacy in that when she went to into the second world war despite the fact that she aided uh, escaping uh, allied soldiers, she actually treated both British and German uh, casualties. And the final words was that she had, well, I'm paraphrasing, is that, um, if you are patient with me for a second, um, yeah, is that what she said, patriotism is not enough, I must have no hatred or bitterness for anyone. That was her final words before she was executed. And I think that is the legacy that uh, she should have. She was also a matron at St. Leonard and she helped to train trainee nurses. And if it's not, and if the St. Leonard is not responsible for 
uh, training nurses, and I think they should wear that mantle and become a, a college again. Thank I you so much for that, David. I don't want it to become something for business people. I want it to become more yeah. dedicated. She's one of the... One where, 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 where develop your ideas, but we're talking to you. Leave, make sure you leave your contact details. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who's next, John? Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Next is Rabbi Hershey Glutch. Apologies for mispronouncing your name, Rabbi. Look. Look. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for this meeting and for all the previous comments. I think we need to think logically. And we say that more housing is needed in Hackney, which is very true. But new housing doesn't happen in a vacuum. When there are more people in the borough, you need more health facilities. So therefore, instead of reducing the services and the space at St. Leonard's, we need to increase the space and services in St. Leonard's because Hackney will have so many more people than was envisaged when Homerton was constructed and various hospitals were closed. No one in their wildest dreams thought that Hackney would have as many people as we have today and, as, and, uh, and what is being projected for the next 20, 50 years. So therefore, health healthcare needs to be developed further, not reduced. Uh, St. Leonard's does a very good job. It provides specialists, some will call it boutique services for people in the borough. Again, it's not just that there are more people in the borough, but also health needs have increased dramatically. Uh, people are less healthy than they used to be. This is for, for various reasons, including of course COVID. Long COVID is a complete new phenomenon which needs to be dealt with and like, like it, it was up before that the 2 million people with long COVID, if we think of how many of those live in Hackney and City or work in Hackney and City. So this is a whole new uh, development as far as healthcare is concerned. So therefore I think we need to be modern. We need to think not about 30 years ago, we need to think about 2021, what the health requirements and needs Absolutely. are, and work within that context. Yeah, good. Thank you, Rabbi Gluck. Who's next? Um, perhaps I could, could I just chip, chip in uh, with, with a very brief comment, um, that um, the existing site is used in quite an inefficient way. Um, I, I believe I'm right in saying that the buildings uh, only occupy about a third of the site. So, um, there may be a trade-off between um, uh, selling part of the land uh, to, to generate funding for redevelopment, uh, using part of the land um, for uh, a, a public purpose, such as providing social social housing. That's just that, that, that. I'm not saying that's what should happen, but that is a possibility of something that may happen given that the current building, it has a lot of voids in the physical structure, which aren't being used at the moment. And also its footprint only occupies about a third of the total site. Mm. Thank you very much. John, who's next? Next person is Janet Porter. Marion, you're coming next. Janet Porter's next. Yes, hello everyone. Um, thanks very much. Uh, lots of good ideas today. It's great to have a vision. But what I'm not clear about is the decision making process. Who are we aiming this at? Who makes the final decision? Who should we be lobbying and um, directing any campaigns at? Because I'm not quite sure where the final decision making process or how it works. Can anyone explain that? Yes. Oh, well, I think I think we could all explain that. I think I think Claire and Malcolm might want to add to this, but but basically there is a structure 
which uh, includes the, the the local the local authorities and the providers and and the CCG. Uh, and I think um, CCG is 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 leading on the plan. The Homerton Hospital is in the position where they where they they could put in a bid to acquire the the Homerton, the 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 St Leonard's Hospital and, and the land there. Um, and that would give the opportunity to, to develop it. So the, the big question is, I think all the organizations, I think are working together quite successfully. The real issue is, is how to get the money, uh, how, how to make it happen. And that, that's gonna mean that we've got to be very united and we've got to be able to put pressure on, on, on government and um, you know, N NHS England. So, that, to me, that's a sort of the basic structure, but others might want to contribute on, on that process. I mean, Claire, I think, would you like to? Yeah, just so just to add, so I think what, as Malcolm described, the, um, the various partners in the City and Hackney system have been working well together um, over the last couple of years, actually, on kind of uh, thinking about what the future of St Leonard's one of the things that I've picked up and I've um, I'm actually having some conversations this week with people across northeast London is that actually if we're now going to move on to this next stage of development we do need an infrastructure kind of some people that are absolutely driving this forward and I think that's the problem at the moment is that we don't really have say a program director that is going to do all of the uh, liaison with various stakeholders and pull together the next stages of the case that sort of single person that you know is really kind of driving this forward so that's one of the things that we um, uh, are looking to do and I think really is kind of missing in terms of the infrastructure we currently have in place we've got lots of uh, commitment from partners but what we need now is somebody to work with us to help us to move this forward to the next stage. And you say everybody is sort of in the same loop, are they? I mean, are all at the moment working in the same or pushing, pulling in the same direction. Yeah. And, and that's what's rather unique about this project is that, is that yeah, I mean, rather unusually. <laughs> now, although I, I, I must say, historically, the CCG has been sort of very collaborative. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's fairly unusual. But I also think that, that, you know, I've seen projects before where people have worked together very collaboratively as we are doing now. Uh, and we got to make sure that the, the rug isn't pulled from under our feet by another bit of the system. Uh, and that's going to be sort of quite, quite fundamental, I think. So getting the, for example, the Northeast London CCG on board is going to be sort of very, very important. Getting NHS England on board is going to be very, very important. Yeah, and I think in that context, I mean, a thought is being given to whether the existing project group has all the right people in it. And I know that's something that uh, Claire in particular is very focused on. Um, but I think the point you make, Janet, uh, is absolutely crucial. That we need to be very clear who actually is going to decide the future of the site uh, and who, who is or what body or bodies are, are going to come up with the funding uh, to uh, do whatever development gets approval. But um, it, it's, it seems to me at any rate, and Claire may be able to clarify this a bit, but it, it, it doesn't seem to me that that clear pathway is, is yet established. Okay, let's get the next question, shall we? Next person is uh, Marion McAlpine. Marion, you're on mute at the moment. Unmute. She's just unmuting. Uh, can you hear right. me? Yep, we can no. hear you now. Yep. So my name is Marianne McAlpine. I'm from Hackney Key Park NHS Public. Um, and as you can see from the name of the group, we are very much in favour of everything in the NHS staying in the public sector. And we know so much already has been sold off. But we very much welcome this initiative to get the widest possible discussion. And indeed, it's been very interesting to hear the history as well. And I want to say I very much agree with the rabbi um, in terms of our main priority is to keep this for use within the NHS for most of the reasons that the rabbi said. And also because there are already very important services which have been sent outside the borough with great difficulties for those people who are using them. So um, 
Yes, we're we're not in favour of this being used for housing. And here again, I agree with the rabbi. And partly that is because uh, a lot of other housing, very good housing that's been established in Hackney, quite a lot of it has gone to, to the private sector. And once we've lost our family silver, we will never get it back again. So although the site is big and it's got a lot of unused space at the moment, we think that that space has got more than enough need within the NHS and possibly social care as well. So that's our first really strongly held point. We don't want the private sector in there. We don't want private beautiful flats being sold for millions. We want, we, I'm coming on to suggestions for how to pressurize the funding in a minute. But the services that are um, out of borough at the moment at great, great cost to the patients and their families are uh, some mental health services which are right out in Mile End and this is now, this is not in the future, while longer term care for older people with mental health needs is now in East Ham. Now the difficulties of going to those places for often elderly people or the families of elderly people or an older um, spouse wanting to go and see their spouse um, on public transport are great. And although I think there's been a suggestion made that transport will be provided, we all know under austerity that we've got now and the further cuts to be done, that won't continue. So older people, people with mental health needs, need close connections with their community networks. And we've had indeed already that this site, as we know, it's very accessible. It's got very good, I'm talking about this site, St. Leonard's, it's got very good transport uh, links. And then the other, and, and it may well be that there'll be hubs created for older people, which might be in other places as well, further out, outside Hackney, uh, King George's, or um, indeed Wits Cross. Mm. So we don't want Hackney people to have to travel outside the borough. That should be our principle. And with St. Leonard's, it's possible. And the other thing that was quoted before from Dr. Uh, Coral, sorry, somebody's forgotten her other name, from Coral, um, is the important needs for intermediate care. There used to be Median Road. I don't know if people remember that. Yeah. It's specially built. It's now used for other purposes. So there really isn't anywhere for what's called step down care. People who are recovering, who don't need to be in hospital, but they need professional care. And then, as again, the rabbi said, there's this two million people across the country who've got long COVID. And that really needs a lot of attention, particularly with what we're going to experience, I think, over the next few months. Um, so it could be <coughs> have long COVID with, with some of the services already provided and other ones that are important for people with complex long-term conditions. Okay, Marion, thank you. We're told, yes, I just yes, want to, we're told that, um, that we're told that self-care okay. is the answer, yeah. but we don't we actually don't think, just kind of echo, we don't we think, don't think self-care yeah. or care in the community is the answer, it means professional it's care, care in the community often means, often means that women have their, their jobs to, to, to provide the care. Yeah. Okay, Marion, we have, we have to get another question. But, yeah, yeah. but, but thank you, Marion, Mary, you're, 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 you're bouncing. bouncing. We need to pass on to another question, but thank you very much for the- I've just got one other point, and that relates to what you said, Malcolm. We, we, the money isn't there at the moment, but it is needed. And we want to work with the local NHS, who've been extremely supportive and wonderful so far, with the council and with other community groups, with everybody who's here to insist that the money is found. We're told that there isn't the money unless we sell something off, but we have to tell NHS England and beyond them the government that they have to provide these resources and make up for the years of austerity that we've experienced so far. Thank you, Marion. We're gonna go on to another question. Thank you very much, and also thank you very much for the contribution, the written contribution that you've already made. It's, it's very, very well received, thank you. Thank John, you. who is the next uh, speaker, please? Person, Owen Ramsey. Owen. Hello, Owen. 
Oh, hello, thank you. Um, I actually had a question, first of all, which was a question to Claire. Um, and I think it's already been addressed by some of the comments that have been made, but um, you said that um, it was important that the site provided more than healthcare services. Now, I disagree with that, but I'd be interested in knowing why you think that. Okay, Claire. So I think it's also, we need to think about when we say more than health services, what, so that can mean lots of different things. So for example, one of the um, a conversation that we had uh, several weeks ago with some other colleagues in health were, they often are looking for um, facilities for uh, community groups to meet and uh, we don't always have uh, facilities identified for that. So that could be something that we would you know, think about, how can you build that into a plan around St. Leonard's? Also, given the size of the site, is there more that we could do on the site um, that I, I, you know, if something the local population, uh, the local community wanted was some kind of outdoor gym facility or more green space, is there something you can put into the, develop into the plan? Um, that is addressing those issues. Are there things that you might be able to do around, um, I don't know, food banks, um, education op opportunities for, you know, if you're going to have a cafe on the site, could you use the cafe to employ local people or people that um, have uh, particular needs and have difficulty getting into employment? So it's all of those sorts of things that I think we need to consider broadly when we're thinking about the future of St Leonard's um, that is beyond what we might traditionally think of as a community hospital or the, you know, and the services that are delivered there at this moment in time. Okay, can I just, uh, right, yeah. um, right, thanks for that. Um, I disagree that there is a need for any of those facilities there. There's an excellent um, uh, gym that's just been opened at Britannia uh, only a few weeks ago. Um, I think my concern is that, as has been said, um, there is a desperate need for housing, and I don't think anybody would disagree with that. But it's the type of housing that, that needs to be built. Um, and I think the history, the recent history of, of, of so-called social housing in, in Hackney just demonstrates that it doesn't meet the needs of local people. Local people can't afford to move to most of these uh, um, developments. Um, it's having an impact, a significant impact on the demographic. Um, I've got nothing against young people. I've got one, I live with one, I have a son, um, and they need to live somewhere. But, you know, the fact that only young people are able to afford, and, and, and very wealthy young people are able to afford many of these new developments needs to be considered. I don't think there is a need for another uh, uh, development uh, with a tiny proportion of genuine social housing tucked at the back, which is what tends to happen. And you only have to look at Britannia, which actually is better than most, uh, but to look at that development to see what, what the reality is. Um, and, you know, essentially, I, I agree with what the, the, the rabbi says, I agree with what uh, Marion has said, and I would hope uh, that, 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 that whatever development um, uh, is considered, that it is NHS retained and providing NHS services. Uh, and, and, and as the rabbi said, um, I would go further. We don't need to be thinking of 2021. We need to be thinking of 2031 and, and beyond. We need to be thinking of the future needs of, 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 of the local community and the changing needs. Thank you. Can I, yeah, can I, so can I just add, so you're absolutely right, we do need to be thinking about 2031, then we know that any development is a long way off, um, uh, you know, we're, we're, in terms of the time frame, you know, I think we've worked out it would be 2026, so we do absolutely need to be thinking about 2031. Um, and, you know, the whole point of this session is to hear from the public because, you know, I just gave you a few ideas which, you know, are things that have been considered in other developments. If that's not what the local community want and that's not going to, you know, really address some of the social determinants of health and you know because housing is one of those then that's what we need to consider so I think you know the whole p point of this this very beginning um, of public engagement and engagement with staff is to get all of the views about what you know what's going to work for St Leonard's and for the local community. Okay well, should I get to go for the next question? Okay so Paula Shaw's the next question. 
Thank you. I'm a volunteer with Hackney Health Watch and the Older People's Reference Group, so you know where I'm coming from. Um, I did put in the chat that it's absolutely imperative that we do have a timeline to work to. So thank you, Claire, for saying 2026. That's the first time I've heard that date. Also to know what restrictions we will have on getting money and not to have our fingers burn like the previous PFIs from years ago. The one thing I wanted to stress was the community needs and health is health and well-being and anything that develops on the well-being side, especially after COVID and people with long COVID, is crucial. And the need for people to have somewhere face to face, not on Zooms, not on digital, is really, really important. So I'm going to leave it at that and I can say more when we get to the next steps. Okay, um, should I move on to the next speaker? Yep, uh, okay, Shirley McGrath. Shirley? Thank you. Yes, it isn't a question, just a, a few points, if I may, please. First of all, um, as a reference made to the decision uh, process, which is obviously crucial, and obviously there is a structure, but it does seem to me that there is or should be an opportunity, in fact, for the consultation to influence the decision-making process and for it not necessarily to be completely bedded down in what already exists or has gone before. Um, but I think uh, the major thing I really wanted to say was about the, the consultation. And obviously it needs to be widespread and as deep as possible. But I do think it's going to be absolutely crucial for its success to put a timeline on it and that, the, that people aren't going to think this consultation is going to go on forever in order to reach everybody and, um, and, and make it work. To make it work, it, there has to be a deadline. I think that 12 weeks with a lot of publicity going on about it is sufficient or maybe a little bit more, uh, but not very much more. Because I think what we need to get is people concentrating their minds on this, really paying attention to it. Uh, thinking what it is is they want for it, and um, and getting their ideas crystallised and and put forward. So um, I, I think um, I mean ideally it seems to me that the consultation probably should be put off until the beginning of September because we are now almost halfway through July with August coming up, uh, and so there's not going to be probably an awful lot, or presumably there will be a lot of people on holiday if not actually going away. And um, so from the beginning of September to have a, a clearly defined 12 week consultation process with an enormous amount of publicity um, should do the thing. Um, and um, I also just want to say finally that I, to make a plea, yes, to, to agree about the, the housing thing, I mean, it's daft. Um, there isn't room to put housing there really. I, I did just wonder about the possibility that part of what goes on on this very large site, which includes a huge car park, which incidentally, I would like to say, um, needs to be much smaller and that there needs to be a provision that any car parking space is for staff and disabled members of the public only, because we ought to be, uh, any new build should be discouraging car use, not encouraging it and making it easier. And, um, Maybe there's a possibility with a huge development of putting the car parks up as it is underground, um, but uh, there could conceivably be space in the car park area now to put a whole new building and conceivably we might give attention to making it much taller than existing buildings. No idea what that would look like or you know, how that would damage the environment, but it might be worth thinking about in order to get in all the things that, that we would want there. But with that caveat, to for a plea for people to be realistic about what we put there, it should be health, social care for the community. And I think I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about a reference or not concerned, but, you know, surprised about a reference to making it work for the people. Obviously, you have to take into account the people round about the actual St. Leonard's building. But the St. Leonard's building is for everybody in Hackney, not just the people who live in the vicinity. Can you have to wind up, please? Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you very much. Right. Okay, thank you, Shirley. Uh, okay, Cynthia White is next. 
Dear, where are you? I was un unmuting. I was unmuting. I hope you can see me. Thank you very much. Uh, um, it is like reinventing the past and midnight meetings when we were trying to rescue St. Leonard's and grab it back. Um, we're there again. And I think we have to be hard nosed about this. Much as I dislike the term, we have to be able to show value for money in this business case. We won't get a chance of funding unless there is a very clear payback for what we suggest. And I think we've got it all to play for. We need to brainstorm a model that draws on everything we are learning about the inequalities of health, which COVID has shown up, and the gaps and the discontinuities that we are aware of in our current uh, network of services, what's coming up from the government in things like uh, no longer requiring uh, patients to have an assessment of their social care needs before they're pushed out of hospital. And the fact that health care and care for well-being doesn't exist in compartments. And we need to see things as a partnership in co-production and in the new uh, way in which we are encouraged to think about things, more opportunities to self-care. That doesn't mean abandonment. It means taking more proactive involvement in our care and being equipped to give ourselves some of what we need by steering policy. Now, I think a new model uh, which draws upon the very uh, clear understanding that our residents in Hackney and in the city have of what they've been missing under COVID. And a lot of things have been in the state of collapse. And we've got an opportunity to rethink this model. I mean, don't let me set a hair running that people wouldn't be interested in, but have the days of a poly polyclinic completely gone? There were some good ideas associated with the polyclinic. It was bringing more services to the heart of the communities and giving better access. And we need things like health education alongside the provision of community services. And we need a sense of complementarity. And we need, I think, to compensate for the lacks that we're going to find now, because we're not going back to where we were before. We're going back with deficits, which we were not uh, prepared for. Uh, when we went into COVID, but they're starting to yawn. They are huge. 13 million people still needing appointments and treatment, all of that. And we're going to need embedded vaccination regimes to cope with viruses we're going to have to live with. We're going to have to have a symbiotic relationship between healthcare and social care, not a confused notion of integration, but a real working together on all sides. That means a lot of inspirational thought based on our understanding of the inequalities at the heart of our system. And they do touch on housing. I mean, in Tao Hamlets, there's a Bangladeshi housing project starting to investigate the needs of the Bangladeshi community and do something about that. That's replicated. It must be in Hackney for many groups okay. and other things too. So, Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you very much. Inspiration is what's needed and yeah. value for money to sell it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Cynthia. And uh, who is next? Uh, next is uh, Councillor Chris Kennedy. Chris. Uh, thank you, John. Um, thank you, Malcolms both and Claire. Um, yes, I'm Councillor Chris Kennedy. I'm the Cabinet Member for Health um, in the London Borough of Hackney. Um, I'll keep my comments uh, short. My first one is that we are um, a net exporter of some of our frailest uh, residents when it comes to care home places. We do not have enough care home places in the borough. Um, uh, I would like to see, um, I, I liked what uh, Marion was saying about um, intermediate or step down mm -hmm. places as well. So I'd like, I'd like 
I'd like us to look at that. Um, I wouldn't be averse to housing on the site, especially if it was housing for health workers and care workers that was affordable for them um, of, of whatever tenure. Um, and the final thing I will say is that we, we ha always have to remember none of us will get exactly what we want from this or, or exactly what we have in our minds and there will have to be compromises um, and that may involve, for example, some uh, expensive private sale um, uh, on the frontage on Kingsland Road that actually brings in millions of pounds that provides um, all the health services and facilities that we want to see on the site. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Uh, okay, next is Stuart McKenzie. One second. I just, Chris, I was, I'm hoping we're moving towards the London Borough of Hackney making a public statement on, on the issue quite soon. Um, uh, we are part of the working group. We will always be part of the working group and we will always work in partnership um, and listen to our residents um, uh, to, to work out how we as a local authority can actually make something um, that really works for our residents and their broader, broader wider determinants of health. health. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. John. John. Uh, thanks. Okay. 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 Stuart McKenzie. Stuart McKenzie. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, listening to all the other speakers and so on, it does sort of cover some of the points um, that I wanted to raise. But I think the thing is, we've got to differentiate what the St. Leonard's is going to offer in the future. In a sense, it already has a number of services that does differentiate itself. But what I think it, we need is, in a way, a label, a branding that brings it all together. And what I'm suggesting is something like this, that it becomes a, a centre of excellence for personal independence and mobility. And that way it incorporates a number of idea, things that already are being offered, foot care, biomechanics, asthma and physiotherapy are going to be, uh, clinics are going to be even more needed because of long COVID. Things like a wheelchair service, bringing people in minor injuries. So people don't have to go to hospital, that this hospital is not gonna be in competition with the, with the bigger hospitals that offer critical care. In other words, intervention uh, at an early stage, providing support to the local community for things that, for everyday uh, things that would make that quality of life much better. So I think if we could brand it and differentiate it, it's a very powerful tool because it does build on the strengths of the past and looks to the needs of the future. And because of, it, of its unique, well, almost unique transport links, as people have mentioned before, it's very centrally located. So people who are not needing an ambulance can get there. Uh, so by public transport. And I think it's in a unique position to offer what I call this center of excellence for personal independence and mobility. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, Great. Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. John, John. <laughs> I want to keep... Next person is Nick Bailey. Nick, Nick. Hello, yeah, Hi. It... can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yeah, I'm from uh, um, Keep Our NHS Public. And um, I, I very much support, um, obviously people have put forward a lot of the um, interesting and necessary ideas for NHS. Uh, facilities and things and, and social care and what have you. Um, and uh, Owen Ramsey, I think, made some very good points. But what I want to say is that at the Health Watch yesterday, the chair put forward the view that if this um, project at St. Leonard's is to be financially viable, financially wash its face, I think was the expression he used, 50% uh, of it would have to be sold off um, you know, to the private housing or whatever to generate the funds. And what I'm concerned with is that this sort of background narrative is being developed. Um, and uh, Councillor Chris Kennedy put it very bluntly as well, uh, that the only way you can sort of defend public services is by privatising part of them. Um, and that that's the sort of reality we live in. And we have to change that reality. We have, uh, the, the NHS has been, we have to keep to the front of our minds that the NHS has been underfunded and we have to demand the funding to develop this site in all the different ways that various people have mentioned and come to conclusions uh, and you know, decisions on that, the NHS and social care usage, but not to uh, you know, go along this path. I mean, the 
we have the example of Whips Cross and St George's, there are two sites um, people may be aware of, you know, that, that are not a very good uh, look for this, uh, the way things are going. Whips Cross is being developed with a lot of housing there, but they're actually using less beds than the, uh, the current site would, would have, even though there's massively increased need. So I'm just flagging this up that I think we have to fight out this question of uh, funding and uh, how we and, and defending, you know, what is a public asset, uh, not by selling bits of it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nick. Uh, <clears throat> John, um, I think Derek Slater is next. Yes, sorry, I'm on the mute again. Yeah, Derek, it's you next. Sorry, I'll keep in mute. Hi, uh, my name's Derek. I'm an occupational therapist and a co-founder of a new um, care agency that's based here in Hackney, just across the road from St. Leonard's in Haggerston. Um, and I've worked in for health and social care in Hackney for quite a long time before going independent. Um, I'm loving the passion that we have here. So many people are really, really passionate about what's gonna happen, which I love. Uh, for me, I would love to see more integration between health and social care because we talk a lot about what's going to happen with the NHS, what services will be there for the NHS. But we have to realize as we go forward, we need to have more integration between health and social care. And then we also have to take a, a snapshot of what we think the population is going to be like in 2030, 2035. And unfortunately, one of the biggest game changers is going to be around dementia and dementia services. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm not against selling off part of the hospital for funding, but if that does happen, then it needs to really look closely at how that funding is going to be used. How can we integrate dementia, learning disabilities, um, mental health, maybe having like a wellness cafe, a crisis cafe where people with dementia or learning disabilities are working there. And we've got on-site support from physiotherapists, occupational therapists. Um, that's just all I wanted to say. Okay. Thank you, Derek. And I think our last question comes from Salim Sadiq, former mayor of Hackney. Salim. Salim, you're on mute. I'm asking you. <laughs> all right. He's off mute. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, uh, yes. I, uh, I, uh, I. Sorry, I sorry. just. I just. The position is not only the uh, Saint Leonard is associated with one nurse, but also with Dr. Parkinson, who 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 identified the Parkinson disease. That means it has a condition of important you know, contribution to the health of the community. We, we are very much asking the money. This government can give about two billion to three different organization or uh, individual who have no way of providing the services. Until unless we, we pressurize politically to receive those funds which we require, we will not be able to do what everyone has said because the time is short. I actually have, I think the good example we should follow is from France without the violence that we, we force our leaders, the prime minister as French people have forced the French president to do something with the community advantage. And, That's, I think, the, I think I should stay up to that one. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Salim. Right, um, we're now coming to the end of the meeting. Um, lots of uh, great ideas, thank you very much. We want to incorporate everything that you've said. So we are recording the meeting. and We will better sort of gather all that stuff, but I'm also asking you that, uh, will you also present us with your ideas in, in, in more detail? And when you contact other people in the, 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 that you work with in the community, for example, Chris, you know, getting the message across to all councillors about the importance of this kind of involvement is, is going to be so important. I mean, um, you know, letting thousands of flowers bloom at this stage is, is really important. 
And um, Shirley was talking before about a consultation process, but I think first of all, we've got to get those people's ideas in. We've got to sort of start, you know, producing the people's plan and start to share that plan and, and, and you know, make sure we have really robust ideas. I think issue, can you, oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, uh, so that, and that's going to be sort of very important. So, please let us have your idea. Let, let us have your ideas. Um, contact lots of other people to try to get them to submit their ideas, and let's make sure that we develop very quickly a people's plan, which which we can present to the, to the public. Um, we we'll have a recording of the meeting, as though there's a recording of the meeting, and that that will be written up. I'm, I'm hoping within a, within within a week or two. Uh, John, you might be able to tell us how, how long it will take to write it up. You're muted, John. Well, get them on leave next week, Malcolm. I'll probably think it'd be a bit more than a week. Um, so it'll probably be uh, two or three weeks, I suspect. Okay. okay. But, but I'll, 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 hand, I'll hand it on to the team anyway. Yeah, it's, it's going to be very important that we move sort of very, very rapidly on this process. Can, can, I, can I ask... Um, City Malcolm and, and Claire, if they would like to add anything before the, the meeting finishes. Well, so far as uh, I'm concerned, just to uh, echo what um, Anthony Malcolm has said, it's been a really valuable discussion this evening with lots of great ideas for us to think about. Um, yes, please keep them coming. Uh, the next step in our program of public engagement is going to be a, a, a survey of residents of both the city and Hackney. Uh, so uh, your ideas will help to inform the questions which go into the survey. And do please complete the survey when it comes around and encourage uh, those in your community to do, to do the same. And then we can move on to the neighbourhood based focus groups to get some more detail about the needs specific uh, to the eight neighbourhoods in City and Hackney. And that should provide us with a really good evidence base of what local people really want from St Leonard's uh, to, that we can then put together uh, into a people's plan. Um, and uh, this is going on in tandem uh, with the formal processes for uh, preparing the strategic outline case. And as I mentioned in my rem remarks earlier on, uh, the next bit of that is something called phase 1B. And we are hopeful uh, that we will have our people's plan uh, ready so that uh, ideas contained in it can shape and influence uh, the consultants uh, report, which will be the output from phase 1B. So thanks again, great evening, and thanks all for coming. Thank you so much. And Claire, you'd like to say something. You're also clear, I wonder whether we can communicate through the members of the Homerton Hospital about, uh, about this plan, about, this, uh, about the public involvement sector. Uh, yes, Malcolm, we can, we can absolutely do that. Um, uh, I just wanted to say uh, thank you for inviting me along to the to the event and also it's been really um, interesting to hear everybody's views and it's great to hear the the passion for St Leonard's and um, for you know coming up with some you know innovative ways that we can use that site but also making sure that we're making the best use of the site as it is I think there's a, there's quite a lot in the chat about you know in the short term how might we use some of the so, um, the space we've already got in that site to a better effect. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for having me and uh, look forward to working on the next steps. Good. Thank you so much. And please let us have your ideas. Please be, keep, keep active in this process and make sure that uh, speak to as many people as you can, bring in their ideas and, and let's make sure that, that uh, we really sort of have a, a, a great uh, people's plan for the local people to look at and to discuss and, and, and to develop. So thank you very much. See you all soon, I hope. Bye-bye. Thank you.